what a happy day this is. We celebrate this wonderful and glorious assumption of our Blessed Mother Mary into heaven. Um, you know, this actually wasn't taught as a, uh, a universal teaching, a dogma of the church until around 1950. It's a long time. Now, that's not to say that it wasn't recognized. The church recognized it almost from its beginning. But, you know, in the 1950s, it was uh, made a, a dogma, a, an official teaching, universal teaching of the church by Pius XII. Why was that? Well, you know, there were people who said, well, there's no real indication, nothing from Scripture that says that this actually took place. And yet, from the beginning, traditions that said that Mary was, uh, we called it the Dormition, the Dormition of coming from the word dormitory, huh? Mary's great sleep. In other words, so she, there was no grave assigned for her. No one ever went to you know, that, that grave and, and honored her because she wasn't there. God, who chose her almost from the beginning, from the time of Adam and Eve, when he was going to set things straight, the wrongs that they had done, the original sin that we all incurred, uh, would be made right by the fiat, the yes, of one person, one woman, our Blessed Mother Mary, that she would be given that uh, opportunity by her yes to the Lord to counteract the no of Adam and Eve. And so because she would contain within her womb the living Son of God, no sin would ever touch her body. So there's no original sin. We celebrate what? The Immaculate Conception, another feast day in the church, December the 8th. And because of that, because she was incorrupt, no sin, God would not allow uh, death and the corruption of death, uh, decay, ever to touch her body. But rather, he took her to himself, where we believe that she sits at the right hand of her son as mediatrix. What does that mean? Well, you know, co-redeemer in a sense of with her son, just as surely as uh, Jesus um, said yes to his heavenly father and the word became flesh to dwell among us, that which we celebrate, of course, at Christmas time, the incarnation. So to Mary by her, yes, she would also follow with her son in the joys as well as the sorrows. You know, remember as she and St. Joseph brought the, the infant Jesus into the temple, uh, Simeon and Anna would say that they, Mary and Jesus, would be the cause of the rise and the fall of many, and a sign that would be contradicted, and a sword would pierce her heart, her immaculate heart. And so it does. She would hold all those things from the very moment what we heard today in the visitation, her going to her cousin Elizabeth, who was with child as well at her old age. You know, why did Mary go to be sure that that happened? No, because she felt that Elizabeth would need her help. And so she remains with her for the duration of her pregnancy until she would deliver St. John the Baptist. This occasion also is a wonderful uh, witness to the gift of life, the pro-life, the whole pro-life movement. Huh? Here's John the Baptist in the womb of his mother, Elizabeth, and when Mary's greeting touched the ears of his mother, he leaped for joy. So close was man's salvation. But he also knew and recognized that Mary with child was carrying truly the living Son of God, our Savior. And so these two little guys meet even before they saw the light of day. A wonderful thought. And Mary would stay with Elizabeth to help her. And then she'd have to return home and face the music, so to speak. You know, here's a, a single mother, if you will. You know, it's hard enough in this day and age, but in the time of Mary, you know, we know that St. Joseph, not wanting her to face shame, was going to divorce her quietly, you know, that statement infers that he thought that Mary had done something wrong. 
nothing could be further from the truth. But rather, Joseph recognized and realized that it was God who placed this little one in within the womb of his intended spouse. And he had no right to claim her as his own. So he was going to let her go. But God had another plan. Have no fear about taking Mary, your wife, into your home. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that she has conceived this child. And God said, I want you to give him your name, Joseph. He needs to be legitimate. He needs to be have a legitimate place in this world. And so he does. He becomes the head of the family. Joseph, whom we honor you know, throughout this year, would take Mary as his wife. And he, along with her, would raise this child in the ways of faith. And he grew in wisdom, age, and grace, it says in the scriptures. But there would come a time when Mary would have to let him go. The very first miracle that we know huh, is, at Mary's, is at Mary's command. He says, she says to, his, to her son, they had no wine at that wedding, you remember? And he says, how does this concern me? Your, your problem concerns me. It's not my time. And yet, what does he do? What does she say to the servants and says to you and me? Do whatever he tells you. And so here you are this morning along with me to worship our Lord and God. Do whatever you, he tells you. And so he changes that water into wine the best wine ever, as a pretext to the fact that he would offer wine that would be changed to his most sacred body and precious blood, that which we celebrate today. Do whatever he tells you. And so we remember Mary. But she would also have to say goodbye to her son, giving him to the world. And she'd have to endure his passion as well. The fact that he would be betrayed and denied and arrested, and kicked, and spurned, and nailed to a cross. And she would stand there at the foot of that cross and witness his suffering and death, enduring it just as he did. She did it in spirit. We can't forget, though, that at the foot of that cross, as Jesus hung upon that cross and looked down at his dear mother and said to her, Woman, behold your son, your children, and said to St. John, John, behold your mother. At that moment, Jesus gave her to us and all of us to her. And so we honor her. Now we hear, uh, the first reading would have been about in Revelation about the dragon huh, standing there ready to devour this child that the woman was going to bear. But nothing would ever touch him that way. He would suffer his death upon that cross and then be raised up three days later so that you and I might have the hope of everlasting life. But in the end, Mary would be with John until that day when God would call her to himself to be with him at Jesus' right hand as co-mediatrix for all of us, co-redeemer. Now, how do I say that? Well, only because of her fiat, her yes. And him giving her to us and all of us to her, she is a co-redeemer. Huh? We pray for her intercession, don't you? You know, we have our earthly mothers. We have a heavenly mother in Mary. I don't know about you, but that affords me great hope. In those times of loneliness, despair, whatever it might be, you can turn to her. And she's there for us because she knows our suffering. She experienced it herself just as surely as Jesus did in his own passion and death. And so today we remember that God took her home to be with him forever in the realms of heaven. But even as we honor her upon the face of this earth, we also implore her intercession huh? that we may be children truly pleasing to our heavenly father by listening to her words. Do whatever he tells you.